Hey, what's up? It's Corporal Led again with the Afghan blog. Today we just did a key leader engagement. We are currently in the back of an MRAP, so if it's shaky footage, you're just going to have to cope. Uh, we've got a guest with me today, it's Specialist Reinecker from the U.S. Army. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the uh, trip we just had in to see some Afghan elders. All right, we headed into Kali Musapan. It's actually kind of a nice day out, it's starting to warm up, so that's a plus, I guess. Went in there to talk to the village elder, bring a few people to introduce them, kind of get a feel for what it's like over there. We've been in and out of there. And it wasn't as crazy as it has been over there today, but had some interaction with the locals, got some info, and uh, now we're on the way to the next destination. Bro, uh, how often do you say you go to the town doing this sort of thing? Are there any standard questions that you have that are same questions every time out? Uh, it's more or less to get a feel for what's going on over there. Uh, yeah, I think more relation. But we uh, check up different villages every time. We're on days, usually every week, every other week. It all depends. Um, how often do you say you go out? Is it something that's weekly, a couple times a week? Uh, well, we go out every day. It's uh, just a matter of what villages we hit around here. We try to hit every one of them at least every few weeks or so. Okay. Um, the information that you guys do receive when you go out and you ask these questions, uh, what typically happens to that intel? Is it just passed up the chain? And they... um, passed up to hire. If uh, there's anything interesting, I guess they analyze it and do with it what they will. Right. Um, an interesting side note, as everybody that knows me knows darn well, I'm a Red Sox fan as a special Shrinecker, so we hit it off pretty quick. Sox for life. Yes, without a doubt. We both hit, hope to hit up Fenway Park when we're out of here. They've been here a hell of a lot longer than I have. Um, so hopefully, wish them a good and safe trip home, hopefully sooner than later. And is there anything you want to add? About uh, that's about it. I just want to say hi to my boys back home, my family. I'll be back soon, guys. All right. That will conclude this edition. I will catch you guys later. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Corporal uh, Brian Lett of the United States Marine Corps, uh, currently uh, deployed to Afghanistan as an individual augment. Uh, what I do is public affairs um, in the AFN billet right now, which is uh, American Forces Network. Uh, it's a TV broadcast uh, billet. Uh, basically, I'm starting this video blog out here today uh, to try to give you guys uh, an idea of what it's like to be deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, I know there's many service members, Marines, civilians, you name it, that have some interest, kind of curious what it's like. Heck, for the last three years, even as a Marine, I was curious what it was like. Uh, finally here, getting my chance. Um, as an individual augment, it was a uh, interesting and somewhat long of a journey. Uh, a couple months of kind of build up uh, with paperwork, uh, medical shots, getting the clearance, um, eye test, ear test. You name it, uh, had to get all the checks in the boxes, uh, go to the rifle range, gas chamber, heat training, do all that stuff to get prepared to come out here. Uh, I've only been in Afghanistan for about a week now, still kind of getting my feet planted on the ground, if you will, um, trying to hit the ground running. Uh, so just, first of all, I guess I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself, I suppose. Um, so I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, joined the Marine Corps just over three years ago. I got stationed out of uh, Headquarters Marine Corps in Arlington, Virginia. I spent about a year and a half maybe inside the uh, Pentagon before we closed up shop there and moved uh, just down the way to Crystal City. It's uh, really not that far from the Pentagon, not a gigantic move. Um, so we've been there for probably, uh, this is just a guess, a little over a year, 15, 16 months tops. Um, um, Anyway, back to the IA thing. Uh, so when I got the orders to get deployed, we uh, or I um, flew down to Marsant in North Carolina, Camp Lejeune, to check in. Um, it's supposed to be, I guess, typically a three, four night stay uh, there in Lejeune to go through the process with Marsant, which is pretty much just them making sure uh, you got what you need, um, that you're ready to go, you got your SRBs, you got this, you got that, you got everything lined up. Uh, and you're ready to go. Then they uh, pretty much try to book your itinerary, your flights, um, get you from there to, uh, in my case, Kuwait. I know there's some other countries in the Middle East that uh, they may send you to on certain occasions. Um, I uh, end up spending nine uh, nine whole nights in uh, Camp Lejeune. 
uh, fell over the Martin Luther King holiday, kind of extended my stay. Um, wasn't bad, but if you've ever been there, there's uh, not a whole lot to do unless you want to get some new rims on your car or pawn an engagement ring or something. Uh, so, you know, at times it was hard to pass the time, but, uh, you know, hit the gym, time goes. Um, from uh, Jacksonville, once I got my itinerary, my orders from Mars sent there, I was flown to uh, Charlotte. I uh, had a nice uh, chunk of time to kill at Charlotte. I'd say five, six hours uh, just sitting at the airport before I boarded a uh, eight, nine hour flight from uh, Charlotte to Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, once again, once I got into Germany, uh, I had another lengthy uh, layover. I'd say again, five or six hours uh, before I get on my next flight, which uh, destination for that one was Kuwait. That was another five, six hour flight to get to Kuwait. Um, so I think local time, I landed in Kuwait uh, around uh, midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's a little bit of culture shock getting to Kuwait and out of the airport. Um, you realize then, eh, you're a long way from home at this point. Uh, it's not exactly Virginia or Ohio anymore, but it wasn't too bad. You get through security and there's a lot of it. Uh, some Marines came and met us, uh, picked up me and some of the Marines that were going IA with me. Um, took us back to uh, the local airfield. Um, from there, it's pretty much a waiting game. Uh, the flights go out of Kuwait all the time, I mean 24-7. Uh, it just depends on where those flights are going. If it's a flight you want to try to get on, they have a Space A Center building um, where they have all the flights posted, all the departures, all the destinations of those flights. Uh, again, 24-7. Um, you just go, they do roll call, uh, which is just what it sounds like. Make sure uh, everybody that you know should be there is there. They do attendance. Then they do kind of a manifest. They call out names. If your name gets called, hopefully you have a seat on that plane. Uh, there's stories I heard of you know Marines or airmen or whatever getting their names called, getting all their gear together, which uh, there's a lot of gear, to go to the tarmac and try to get on the flight. And then they actually didn't have a seat, so they had to bring all their stuff back and get back to the room. Uh, as far as that was, I was pretty lucky. Um, f first time my name was called, uh, I actually got all my gear together, all six bags, and got on the flight. Things went smoothly. Uh, it was a C-17, three-hour flight from Kuwait to Afghanistan. Not comfortable, let me tell you. Um, got crammed in the middle section of the C-17. If you're not familiar, there's the middle section going down the middle, which is just like you know, kind of like a civilian or commercial airplane. Uh, on the outside of it, there's... Uh, seats that kind of come down out of the wall, if you will, of the plane, where they're a little more comfortable. You can stretch your legs out, uh, lean your head back against something. You can conceivably get some sleep, and after all the travel we all went through to get there, we all needed it. Um, I, on the other hand, was not so lucky. I was in the middle uh, seat of the middle section, and on this plane everybody's got Kevlars and flax on, and at least all the Marines and some of the soldiers had their weapons. I was carrying an M4. Um, you're crammed in there pretty good you can't sleep and when you can't sleep even though you hadn't really slept in three days it just gives you an idea of how comfortable it was um, but there's nothing compared to I'd say the feeling of landing in Afghanistan and the back door of the C-17 drops and you start walking out and you kind of wonder to yourself you know, how are my eyes even open then you walk out and you're in the sunlight um, and you look up and you think wow you know man I'm here I'm in Afghanistan I wanted this, my command uh, did well by me and made it happen. Now you're here and even though you're sleepy and you're tired, you know, you know that next explosion you hear, it's it's not MCT anymore, it's not boot camp, it's not training, it's it's not fake, it's it's the real thing. Uh, you find a way to get that, you know, journaling, um, it's it's different. But the first thing you see when I came out, first thing I saw coming out of the C17, you look up and you just see these big just almost in, in a way intimidating mountains. But it had just snowed, um, so they're all kind of just slightly uh, snow covered. It, it really was beautiful. Um, then you snap back and think, well, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here for necessarily sightseeing. But it, it was cool. Um, and you realize you're you're in country now. Uh, from there, you go back to another kind of Marsant liaison. They kind of get you squared away once you're in country, and you report to you know wherever you're going to be working for, and you know from there you just try to hit the ground running. I've been here about a week now. Today is actually February 3rd, uh, 2010. It's roughly 10 p.m. local time in Afghanistan. 
say in my week here we've had I think two maybe three uh, rocket or mortar attacks uh, they're just blind fire I haven't heard of anybody sustaining any injuries or any casualties or even wounds um, so no uh, no real damage to this point to my knowledge um, it's just part one of this blog uh, I just want to try to bring it um, to more of a personal level with people that haven't been deployed that's gonna be my goal my mission. Uh, not sure how often I'll do this. Um, I will do it as much as possible. I hope people watch it. I hope they enjoy it. Um, oh, well, before I forget, this is actually um, my first night in what will be my permanent uh, bachelor pad, if you want to call it that, for the next six months. Uh, I had been in a temporary um, staying room or temporary room prior to tonight, and it was not pretty. I really had no electricity. Um, just so small I couldn't fit all my gear in it. Um, nah, my gear was probably a little more than I needed to bring, um, but nonetheless I couldn't even fit it in the room. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around here briefly, uh, try to show you the room. Uh, it's real small, the lighting's not too good, you may not see too much, so I'll keep it brief, but I figured at least I'll try to give you an idea. I'm sitting on my bed now as I grab this. Uh, at the foot of my bed is that stand that you see. As I turn it around, there's some Christmas lights up there that the uh, sailor had in here before me. Very decorative. Um, the little wall there, which I could reach out and darn near touch it. Uh, where it gets dark right there is just a drape hanging over my door. Um, and there's another wall that would probably be too dark for you to see. But as I come a little bit more around, there's a locker, uh, a lamp, and a little bit of... Uh, I guess you'd call it a shelving unit that you can fit like four books into. Um, but that gives you an idea of the room. It's pretty small. It's nothing special, but it will do. Uh, I'm not here for luxury. But that's really it. It's just part one. I'll be trying to get to you guys doing this a couple times a week. Um, until then, I'm Corporal Lett. I am out of here. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back for more. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's Corporal Lett. Um, wanted to get back on. Basically, there's a lot of different things I want to talk about on this one. Some of them I just refuse to talk about really with anyone, but especially in this format, wasn't sure how to go about it. Um, not that I answered that question, but I'm just going to put it out there. just want to talk about some of the experiences that I don't have on video and haven't um, been discussed or brought up to this point. It's really just kind of, I guess you would say, the side effects, if you will, of being here. Not so much side effects, but just your experiences. And sometimes how they make you feel and maybe little changes you notice in yourself. Um, see, go back to the first time I left the wire. They're in a village doing a patrol. Um, actually came across a little room that was full of kids probably between the ages of 3 and 7. Uh, about 10 to 15 of them that had all been executed. Um, it was obvious, point blank range, um, just the way the, the room was set up and the way the bodies had fallen. And obviously, for visual reasons, um, I've been in a few firefights, um, was on a combat outpost and they tried to overrun it with about, I'd say, 20 to 25 um, members of the Taliban, not you know, a real formidable formidable force um, to over actually overtake anything, but they tried. And, you know, I fired off 20, 20 rounds just under a magazine. Um, and there's this one, you know, I was trying to stay disciplined in my sectors of fire, fields of fire. Um, you know, there's one individual that was obviously firing at me. Uh, he would duck down, pop up and down behind some cover, um, and fired off a couple of rounds at him, and he kept popping up and fired again, and, you know, he never popped back up. Hasn't been confirmed, you know, confirmed kill or anything, but, um, you know, something happened. And, uh, perhaps most recently on a trip, I was a, uh, first responder, 
to a victim of a mortar attack. Um, first responders simply being the first on the scene to try to treat the injuries. Uh, the individual is missing his left arm, a good portion of his uh, chest. I just removed my blouse, did everything I could. You know, it's kind of as they teach you, apply pressure, um, talk to the victim, try to get them to speak and carry on a conversation with you, try to prevent shock. Um, did uh, what I could. Uh, a couple hours later, uh, the individual passed on. Um, those are just some of the experiences that one I wasn't real comfortable with talking about. Um, still not sure how comfortable I am. Uh, it's it's just it's things like those that kind of stick with you in your time here. You deal with them the best you can. You try to talk about them. I've been blessed with working with great people that um, are willing to talk to me and ask me about it. Um, if I had it my way. They may not even know about most of these situations, but I've always been a guy that talks and kind of talks about what's on his mind. Um, so, you know, when you get back from these missions, there's, you got to have somebody to sit back and talk to. And obviously, I don't have all this type of stuff on video, some of it. Um, <clears throat> not stuff I think sh some of most should be obviously aired or anything like that. Um, and again, you know, my experiences are my experiences. I don't know what somebody else may go through here. Um, I'm just simply trying to get back to the roots of my blog as far as telling you what I've done, what I've seen, kind of how it makes you feel, and it's really weird. Uh, you tell yourself you, should, you can handle anything or see anything and you're going to be alright. And I think for the most part I'm fine. Um, I've had some co-workers mention that lately I've been maybe a little distant, so it kind of just don't always look like I'm all there. And you know, the stuff is on your mind. It's hard not to think about, but you know, I also want to point on that during my time here, it's not all bad, as you've seen by the videos. A lot of good stuff's going on. It's not all blood and guts. Um, it's just it's what happens here, and you deal with it the best you can. You move on. You hope when the situation comes up or you find yourself in it, you don't panic. You, uh, training kicks in. You do what you can. Um, but a part of you always wonders, especially with the last incident with the mortar attack, you always wonder if there's something you could have done. Um, maybe something you didn't know that you should have. Um, and it, you know, it it eats at you a little bit, but there's only so much you can do. And I've always been the personality that I'm I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do it better than somebody else. That's not a slight on anybody else. That's just high expectations of me. And when you're put a situation where it could be life or death, it's not one you want to lose. Um, not saying I lost, I, I did everything I could, um, but basically I just, I don't know, I thought maybe talking to my computer would make me feel a little better um, about some of them. But yeah, you know, life goes on, you do what you can, um, good support here. Um, that's that's really it. Um, but I did want to try to express that side of things uh, to my subscribers and my viewers, and whoever has sent me messages lately. I will be trying to get back to you here shortly. Um, and that's really that's really all I got. Um, I'll be back in the near future with you know more blogs, videos. Um, you know, until then, take care of yourself and enjoy life. Hey, what's up? It's Corporal Lett. <coughs> um, trying a little different something with the setup, see how it works. I uh, just want to get back on here say hello to some people, especially the family. Uh, business has picked up, if you will, lately. Um, got the chance to do the MOS thing that you hopefully saw on here. That was a good experience. Uh, Abdul Kaskin, the uh, Iman, they call it, who actually does the sermons. 
and does all that stuff. Was a great guy. Spent many years in the states. Got to experience a little bit firsthand the the Muslim faith. They're not all, uh, you know, extremist. Uh, it was a, it was a good deal, good experience. Let me grow a little bit as an individual. Um, also, the uh, Afghan crew chiefs, which was the first time ever they had been trained, in this case by the U.S. Army. That was a very fun, very cool experience, um, flying with them. It was a little bit eye-opening. Uh, the first day I went to cover it and get some footage uh, was the classroom training portion. Uh, just the day before, I was supposed to go fly with them. And they were walking around this room in a circle, actually, um, with a wooden plank. And that's how they were training and getting ready to fly. That was the day before I was supposed to go up with them. Uh, so I was a little scared, but uh, they did well. It was a safe trip, good experience, good story. Um, then I got to uh, go outside the wire for my first patrol, and that was my light. Everything's safe. Um, got to do that. That was fun. Uh, had some pretty crazy experiences on that trip um, that will probably, well, change my life for the rest of it. Um, more details on that to come right now. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it, and I probably shouldn't. Uh, but I do want to say hello to my family and that I love you all. I miss you very much. Um, think about you a lot. Uh, Peggy, you as well. Um, I know I've kind of let you out on the last one. That was not intentional. That's just me getting old and forgetting. But I love you. I uh, think about you all the time. Hope you are doing well and regaining your strength and your health. Um, also, Allison, cousin of mine, got the chance to talk with her online today on Facebook. That was fun. Um, just I miss everybody. My mom, sister, Jason, and Jason. Um, I've been here about seven weeks. Business is picking up. I'm supposed to go out for a couple weeks um, in the near future on a mission. Um, see if that gets uh, to go through. Uh, pretty excited about it. Should be a good opportunity. Um, just day by day out here. Uh, the weather is really heated up. It's no longer five degrees and worried about snow and uh, shoveling off satellite dishes so we get reception. Uh, say it's probably 80 degrees most of the time. Uh, to give you an idea of how high the mountains are, even though it might be 80 degrees down here, if it rains, you know, the mountains are still snow. So there's a big uh, altitude difference between our temperature and what it is up there. Um, but I wanted to just get back, say hello to everyone, um, especially back home in Ohio. Uh, I'll be on here again in the near future and go from there. Until then, oorah and God bless the Marine Corps.